Today we dive into film noir and show you how you can get a stylized look like this without a green screen. And I get naked. N no. Maybe. Well, think about it. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And before we get into that shot that we had in our ad, let's break down what noir is and where it came from. The interesting thing about film noir is that the filmmakers creating these films when the trend began wouldn't have called them by that term. It wasn't until many years later in 1946 when those films finally made their way overseas that a French film critic coined the term film noir, which literally means black film. Since all these crime dramas shared the same traits, most notable here that they are all very cynical and dark stories. But the style or movement really kicked off with John Huston's film The Maltese Falcon, which was released in 1941. There were others that came before this that are argued to be the first, like Strangers on the Third Floor and Fritz Lang's M from 1931, which is an excellent film that is absolutely worth your time. I put a link for that in the notes below. But Maltese Falcon is really what popularized it. Noir films were very pessimistic. Usually crime dramas filled with cynicism, very stylized lighting, framing, and cutting, and clearly influenced by pulp detective novels and German expressionism like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari from 1920. Now, although noir started in the 40s, it remained popular until the 1960s with one of the last great noir being Orson Welles' film Touch of Evil in 1958. And though it lost popularity, it didn't die. You see that style pop up all the time now with neo-noir, which is just modern film noir. And we've had some great examples over the years with films like LA Confidential, Brick, Blood Simple, Memento, Seven, and a lot more on the nose and over the top with Sin City. Of course, many see film noir as a genre, but others would argue that it isn't a genre at all, but instead a style and tone for a genre. So you wouldn't have a noir film, you would have a crime drama film in a noir style. Style. And I'm curious about what you think about this. Do you consider noir a style or genre? We pinned a comment below, so if you want to throw your opinion into the mix, reply to that. But now that we're all caught up on what film noir is and where it came from, let's recreate a few shots that call out that style. Of course, we're going with a very classic film noir style with all of these, which means over the top stylistic, low key black and white images like this one. For this, Josh and Justin hung a shower curtain outside the door and blasted a ton of light into it to completely blow it out. They gave the camera a nice off-kilter Dutch angle, and what finishes this shot off is really the wardrobe and props. The hat, the jacket, and the gun really take it the rest of the way. Of course, give it black and white and our character a cigarette, and we now have an ominous film noir silhouette. And that is one of the more fun aspects of this style. It's so simplistic and so in your face, it really isn't hard to get some great results like this, which is nothing more than one light shining through a cookie, which we have I've talked about those in the past before. It's just a solid of some kind with a pattern cut into it to give you whatever shape shadow that you need. For this, of course, we have cut strips to emulate drapes. Or we could do a shot like this or this. For these shots, we made a quick $20 Home Depot run and got these drapes, so now we can create these window shots right inside of our studio to completely control the light and dial in that very stylistic look. For this one here, we just mounted the drapes near the wall and blew out the other side of them, just like we did with the door. But now we have a window where there wasn't one. And if we move back, you'll see that we created that window in a door frame. The main components for all of these are contrasting and ominous lighting, the correct wardrobe, hard shadows, some haze, and you could also experiment with black Promis filter or a stocking as we showed in an older episode. For this, I was using our Noir 2 black and white LUT from our cinematic LUTs pack. You can find a link to that in the notes below, but using the right black and white setting takes your image from this to this. Now let's pay some bills and then get a look at how we get this shot without green screen. She was a dime. A dime piece of a dame with legs that flowed like a river wild. She walked in and uttered two unforgettable words from that gorgeous face. Sponsor time. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, or innovator, Domain.com is the place to go when the next idea hits you. When you get a domain name from Domain.com, you're taking the first steps in creating an identity and vision for your brand or idea. The world's top two premier and most recognized domain name extensions, .com and .net, which means those are the ones that are going to help you build your brand and expand your presence online the best. Of course, Domain.com is reliable, affordable, and easy to use. And to show you some love, they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices when you get domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use the coupon code FILMRIAN at Domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think domain domain.com. Logo. Hi, you're back. Missed you. So we have this shot, which originally looked like this, 
And if we move back even further, look like this. We got this effect by buying some brick face wood panels from Home Depot, which we got for about 25 bucks a piece. And we just needed two of them. We secured those to the wall temporarily with gaff tape because gaff tape. Then we blacked out the background and lit our scene, which was just a hard light behind Josh to create that shaft. Stop. <laughs> Then we had one of our Luxie lights to fill Josh's face when needed. So now we take our footage into After Effects or your editor, compositor of choice. You could definitely do this right inside of Premiere, but we're gonna do an After Effects for this one. First thing I'm gonna do is add my box screen. You can do this by adjusting your comp size if you want, but I'm just adding bars since this is going into a 1920 by 1080 project in the end. And I'm doing this up front so I can see what my final frame is gonna be. So I'm only working on that area. Next, I'll mask out my blacked out background, then hunt down a city image that I think works like this one right here and bring that in below my footage. Now I'll feather my mask on my main footage and then add a blur to my city image. Then I'll add an adjustment layer above everything, which is where we're gonna add all our color correction. For this, again, I'm using our Noir 2 LUT from our cinematic LUT pack, which I was able to monitor my shots with this LUT applied while we were in production because I was using my 17 inch small HD monitor. As with all of their monitors, you can throw a LUT on an SD card and load it right into that monitor. I just said monitor like 20 times. This helps a ton with exposure and contrast for your scene when doing something this stylistic. But you can get something similar without spending any extra money just by adding a black and white filter, then adjusting the different hues to get the black and white that you want and adding grain. Most software has the ability to add grain or noise built into it. So just throw that on. After that, I'll add another instance of Lumetri or Levels or Curves plugin to push the contrast a little bit more. And now it's looking good, but the city is standing out a bit too much. So I'll add a black solid above it and below our main footage and then drop the opacity down to about 40%. Then I'll add another black solid and mask to come off the bricks just a touch and feather like crazy and drop the opacity to about 20%. This will add a nice feathering into the background. And that's it, our highly stylized film noir shot. Again, a huge aspect in getting a shot like this to work correctly is the angle of light and the wardrobe our talent is wearing. Selling any image is about every ingredient, slack on any of them and the whole thing crashes. But that's it for today. Check out the notes below for all sorts of new info. We have links to gear that we use to make Film Riot, a link to our mailing list and social links for the whole Film Riot team. And I'll see you next week when I land a plane in the Hudson. Oh, shit. oh, God. <laughs> Who put that there?